David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have something for you that I am excited about. It is a pen being produced for a Kickstarter project by the Woodshed Pen Company. And that pen is called the Shimmer. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Woodshed Pen Company Shimmer, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about these unique pens. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, provide a writing sample, as well as discuss a bit about the Kickstarter project. It's a project which is coming to a close very soon, in just a matter of a few days, so if you care for this pen, it's something that you'll want to act on fairly quickly, because the window to pick these pens up is actually closing pretty fast. And thanks go out to the Woodshed Pen Company for providing two different versions of this pen for review. The gentleman behind the Woodshed Pen Company is Mike Allen. He's based out of Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, here's a picture of Mike from a few years ago when he visited China. Uh, he has served in the U.S. Air Force and worked as an emergency 911 operator before he decided to make his hobby of making pens into a full-time job. The Woodshed name came about because Mike envisioned himself one day being an old, shirtless, beer-bellied, grumpy woodturner, uh, making things out in a lean-to. Uh, now, Mike doesn't take himself too seriously. Uh, here's his business card. On it, it proclaims him to be a legitimate pen maker. Uh, that made me laugh when I saw that. Okay, let's talk about the pens. The Kickstarter project includes eight different colors of the same model pen, there is green, yellow, orange, pink, blue, and purple, which were all the original colors included in the campaign. I like the light pastel colorway of this translucent material. As goals were met, then two additional colors became available, the Nordic Snow and the Black Onyx. The pen arrives in this simple box, and inside we have a pen. This is the blue model, and I also have a purple one as well. Uh, I think that this blue shows up nice on camera, so I'm going to use this mainly for the review, but during some of the pictures I'll show you, uh, as well as in the size comparisons coming up later, you'll get a closer look at this purple color here. Uh, the pen is an acrylic resin. Uh, these are made from custom blanks Mike created himself, so you're not going to find this exact material anywhere else. Uh, as the name of the pen would imply, the distinguishing feature of this pen is the shimmer. Contained within the resin, there is something pretty cool. Um, as you twist it, you can see how it really sparkles when the light catches it. Um, here's a close-up look at the sparkles. I really like the variety of color that you have here. There are several shades of blue and then purple and green. Uh, the shimmer is actually part of the material. It's not something applied to the exterior of the pen, so it's not something that's going to flake off or anything like that. Here's a look at the purple model. Uh, you can see that the glitter matches the material, that there's a high volume of purple in there, but then it also still has some color variation as well. The pen is not especially large. It's very close to the size of a Sailor Pro Gear. Uh, let's take a look at the cap. The top of the cap is flat, with a rounded edge. Uh, the cap is clipless and devoid of any roll stops. Um, the cap is almost straight. There's less than a millimeter rise from the beginning to the end of the cap. Then there is a small step down to the barrel, which like the cap tapers down just slightly, again, less than a millimeter from beginning to end. And on the end, it is again flat with a rounded edge. The cap twists off in a rotation and a half, and underneath we have a stainless steel number no. 6 Yovo nib. Uh, the nibs will be available in either fine or medium for this pen. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a bit of an elongated flare and then angles up until you reach the cap threads, which I don't find to be sharp or uncomfortable, and then a medium-sized step up to the barrel. While the section is on the narrow side of my personal tastes, I find it to be comfortable. I've been writing a number of letters with this pen lately, so it's something I haven't had any issues with during extended writing sessions. 
On a side note, if you ever wanted to send a letter, I do include my P.O. box in the notes below each video. I've always said that if you take the time to write me, then I will commit to write you back. It's nice to hear from you, and it gives me an excuse to use my pens more. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, back to this pen. Uh, it is plenty long enough to use unposted, which is a good thing since this cap is not designed to post. Uh, it is a cartridge converter pen, utilizing standard international cartridges and a Schmidt converter is provided. Uh, there are no seams in this barrel or metal parts in the section, so if you apply the appropriate amount of silicone grease, this pen could make for a very cool eyedropper. Um, I think the material has the right amount of translucency as well, enough to kind of give you a fuzzy peek at what's going on inside. Okay, now let's discuss a bit about the Kickstarter campaign. The main purpose of the campaign was to help Mike purchase a CNC machine. Uh, if you haven't seen one before, there are several different types, but this is the one that he's looking to pick up, and they are rather expensive. The goal for this project was to raise $33,000, which would pay for the materials to make the pens and cover the costs of the new machinery. And Mike has blown past that goal. Uh, the last time I checked, it was sitting at around $55,000. Uh, I asked Mike if he had any specific plans for the excess. Uh, as with just about everyone, this has been a challenging year for him. A healthy chunk of his sales would have come from pen shows, and we are not having any pen shows. So the excess revenue from this project will help fill that gap. He also plans to reinvest a great deal back into his business. He is currently working out of his garage and can use some additional storage and workspaces. Uh, he plans to introduce some new models in the future, which will require some additional tooling. And who knows, he just might be able to build out a separate work building just for pen making and be able to move everything out of his garage. So maybe he'll get that long sought after lean to after all. Uh, in regard to pricing, there are several different tiers and add-ons you can choose from. I'll let you check out the campaign to see all of those options, but the basic price that's important is the cost for a single pen is $135. And I feel that that's a very reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. Um, I love the pastel color options. Um, I find the glittery shimmer to be nice and not so over the top that I feel like I'm using a pen intended for an eight-year-old girl. But if you happen to know an eight-year-old girl, I think she'd like the color and shimmer on this pen uh, as well. Uh, another cool thing about these pens is that they will be produced with Mike's new CNC machine. So you get to receive something produced on what you help contribute to make possible. And Mike has been blown away by the support that he's received from the community. Uh, the campaign ends on September 3rd, so there's only a few days left to participate. Um, if this pen catches your eye, I'd highly recommend you check out the campaign via the link in the notes below. If you pick one up, I don't feel that you'd be disappointed. Uh, you're supporting a small business and ending up with a pretty cool pen. Uh, thanks again. Go out to Mike for providing these pens for review. If you would care to see some of his other offerings outside of this campaign, make sure to check out his Instagram feed. He mainly sells his pens through Instagram. I'll put a link to that in the notes below as well. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Woodshed Pen Company Shimmer. Uh, just to get another closer look at that shimmer, the way it hits the light is pretty cool. I just like that a lot. Here it is with the purple model. Here's the purple model. The shimmer there is a little more purple oriented, but it still has a nice little color variation and you can see that those are the exact same size. Uh, here it is with a Montegrappa Elmo Crisio Cola. And here it is with a Platinum 3776 in Chartres Blue. Here it is with a Sailor Pro Gear. It's very similar in size to a Pro Gear. And here it is with a Lamy All Star and a Diplomat Arrow. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the All Star. And this is the Sailor Pro Gear and the Platinum 3776.
Something else I wanted to show really quick is this is one of the pen sleeves that you have an option to purchase. And what's kind of cool about that is that this isn't a rainbow. These are the color uh, options of the original six different colors for this pen. Uh, and if you haven't seen them before, the rickshaw pen sleeves are very nice, uh, extremely soft on the inside. And so it's a nice add-on to have with this pen. Okay, here we go with a writing sample for the woodshed. Pen Company, Shimmer. This is a medium stainless steel nib, and the ink that I'm using is Diamine Jack Frost. This was an ink that was included in the uh, 2019 Inkvent calendar. Uh, it's very nice. It's an ink that has both shimmer and sheen to it. You can kind of see that as it bounces against the light. And I thought it was a good match for uh, this pen that has a bit of shimmer and sheen to it itself. Um, this is what it looks like in regard to the Ackerman Shocking Blue. Uh, or something that is another heavily sheening blue ink, like the Venta Blue Blood. Uh, this is KWZ Sheen Machine, which is a little bit darker. And then this is the uh, J. Herban Kainite du Nepal, which has a little bit of shimmer, but not quite as much sheen. Uh, in the ink vent calendar, they came in these very small bottles. Uh, it's a little 7 milliliter bottle, uh, but this is a nice ink, and it's something I would consider picking up a full bottle of. Okay, on to the rest of the writing sample. Uh, I find that this medium Yovo nib performs just well. Uh, it performs nicely, uh, that it was tuned nicely. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. Um, but I do find that the ink flow on this nib is nice. In regard to reverse writing, I'd say it is a little bit scratchy. But in regard to some fast writing, there's no issue whatsoever. So here we have the Woodshed Pen Company Shimmer. Uh, I would highly encourage you to check out the Kickstarter campaign for these pens. I've really enjoyed using them in the time that I've had them. And I think the folks that will end up with them uh, after the campaign will be very pleased. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.